Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the September 2022 issue of AZ Bio Peers, where we work with Arizona's bioscience community to provide professional education, engagement, and resource sharing. And today is all about engagement as we get ready for Arizona Bioscience Week, which is the week of September 25th through 30th, 2022. There are activities happening all over the state. And it's really hard to keep track of all of those things. So with us today is Dave Bielakowski, and Dave is with Jujima. And they have created our Arizona Bioscience Week partnering app and event app since 2016. And um, we're thrilled to have Dave with him with us today. He is an absolutely fabulous partner. He'll be able to show you around the app and also answer any questions you may have about getting set up. But first, let's talk a little bit about what's going on during Bioscience Week. So on Monday, we are going to be having two great women's events. Um, in the morning, the Critical Path Institute will be hosting a statewide webinar, which is welcome to people all over the country, um, with their leaders talking about how they're impacting health innovation. In the evening, we have an event at Perkins Coy, and that event will focus on some of our leading women in the, in the ecosystem. Um, and sorry, you should have registered early. That event is sold out. Then on Tuesday, we're going to be talking about drug development and discovery here in Arizona and it's hosted by the University of Arizona on the Phoenix Biomedical Core downtown. Um, if you're interested in birthing the next generation of life-saving cures, you might want to check that out. Wednesday, we're celebrating. As we get ready for the AZ Bio Awards, there'll be the Student Discovery Zone starting at 2 o'clock, our life science innovators, including some that are on this call, will be doing rapid fire pitches. At three o'clock, the bar is open. And at four o'clock, we start to celebrate. Make sure you're in your seats on time because I have an extra special surprise for you. Um, we'll be wrapping up the AZ Bio Awards at 530, followed by the life science fiesta where the students are there, innovators are there in their booths, and of course, there's more libations and some great Southwest food. Uh, we kick off the White Hat Life Science Investor Conference on Thursday, all day. That's where our life science investors from across the Rocky Mountain Southwest region are coming together with investors to share ideas and to hopefully share checks. Now, in addition to that, there are some fabulous panels. And you'll want to get there early because the first panel in the morning is Raising Unicorns. And we have with us Dr. Jeffrey LeBenger. On, on top of that, you'll be hearing from life science innovators. And our other panels include a panel on early stage investment, strategic investment. You'll hear from later stage investors and hot off the press, Nick Shipley who is the Chief Advocacy Officer for the Biotechnology Innovation Organization in Washington, D.C., is going to be joining me at lunch, and we're going to be having a conversation about what comes next after important things are happening. The um, Inflation Reduction Act, the impact that's having on life science and investing, not to mention the updating of the UFAs, the user fee agreements, the um, SBIR programs, and, of course, that little thing called Election 2022. So don't miss that lunch talk. And we'll wrap up the day, of course, with cocktail hour. Thanks to our friends at Snell and Wilmer. So as we continue to move on, you have to remember that we do everything because patients matter. So on Friday morning, I hope that you'll join us in person at the new Creighton Health Sciences Campus at Park Central for Voice of the Patient, where from 9 o'clock until noon, we're going to be hearing from life, about life science innovation from the patient perspective. And almost all of our speakers are patients. And then at the end of the day, 
we're going to have a conversation with some of our public policymakers on advocacy and why advocacy matters. For those of you that support our AZ Advances initiative, where we are working on developing the workforce, the commercialization, and most importantly, the companies that will move life science innovation forward in Arizona, um, Contacura benefiting AZ Advances is going to be Friday evening. That is a private party for people that are supporting the AZ Advances initiative. And if you need to know how you can do it too, just watch your emails. You're getting one from me every day this week telling you what's going on every day. You can also look at the website at any time, and I will put that for you in the chat. Now, with that, um, you can see there's a lot going on during Arizona Bioscience Week. And so tools are really important. And so I'm going to turn things over to Dave, and he's going to show you the Arizona Bioscience Week event and partnering app. Thank you, Joan. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm going to share my screen and get this going. Uh, so first off, uh, if once you've registered, you've either already been sent an email with a username and password to both the networking portal and mobile apps, or once you will register, they'll be emailed out to you. Uh, if you have not received them yet and registered, I'll be sending out a reminder email after this uh, specific call. Uh, what you're going to do is enter your username and password into the login box. And if you'd like to download the mobile apps, you have links here that you can easily click on to bring up a QR code to scan with your phone, or it's under the Jujuma Connect app in the app stores, and then you would search Arizona Bioscience Week. Once you log into the platform, first thing you're going to do is set your own password, which will be your password moving forward. It will then take you to this main landing page. All of the features that are available are on the left-hand side. If you are available for partnering, you have access to everything. If you have access just to view the sessions that are streamed, you would just go to the agenda tab. If we're just starting off with uh, best practices in general to ensure you get the most meetings or have the most visibility while using the service, I recommend everyone in the upper right-hand corner go to where their name is and to their profile settings. From this area, you can update your individual information, which is located on this first page. We don't expose anyone's contact information, so you'll see my email just because I'm editing it, but all system-generated emails uh, come from a no-reply email address. If you are responding to a system generated email, it's gonna ask you to either log into the portal or you can respond through the mobile app. If you respond via email, it's gonna just go back to that no reply email address. Other areas you can update is your organizational data. We take your organizational uh, name based off of your registration data, but then you could update all the other information that's relevant for it. You also can upload videos and documents, uh, product data, any sort of photo information. That's all gonna be visible on your main profile when users go and look at it. Starting with the main homepage, for networking purposes, you could easily go to the attendees tab or the meetings tab, depending on what your uh, goal is. The attendees tab is gonna allow you to first search all the different types of attendees based off of registration types. If you want to narrow down to just who's an investor or a life science company, that's a quick search that will allow you to do so. You could search by name, organization, keywords. This event is going to be for in-person and virtual attendees. So you'll see a tag under individuals' names, either virtual or in-person. That is going to dictate how meetings also occur. So there are virtual meetings throughout the week or there are in-person meetings on uh, Thursday during White Hat or also Wednesday, I believe. If you wanted to view any information on the attendees or their companies, their names are interactive, the company names are interactive. If you've uploaded more information to your profile like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, those are clickable. The three buttons here will give you action items. You could request meetings, send messages, add someone to a favorites list to easily access later. Or you have these buttons down below, which are the same for meetings, messaging, and favorites. If I go to a quick view just for Elsa, I'll get all the information on Elsa. If I wanted to view the sessions uh, 
they're speaking at, I could click on the sessions, which will go right to their profile and I can add that to my schedule. I could view a full profile through here or as a user, you could take notes in the mobile app or on the networking portal under sessions, companies, products, uh, individuals themselves. Explaining how one-to-one -one meetings work. So if I go to have a meeting request with Elsa, I'm an in-person attendee, she's an in-person attendee. I'll see the days that one-to-one -one meetings are available. Uh, if I wanted to select Thursday for a chance, I could say, do I wanna meet for 15 or 45 minute meetings? I then see the times that are shown. These are all based off of mutual availability. So the whole system is based off of mutual availability. You can send out multiple requests to the 10 people for Thursday at 9 a.m. First person who goes to accept it is gonna get that meeting time slot. The next person is just gonna be told to simply select another time slot, which is based off of mutual availability. So you don't have to remember who you sent meeting requests to at for what times. For in-person events, assign me a location, we'll assign you a table based off of the day that you're sending a request. Or if it's on another day, you could just suggest a location, which you could write in like Starbucks or uh, venue entrance or something to that extent. You could do subject description, you could update your availability at any point. Again, we default everyone to available. As you're building out your personal schedule based off of sessions you want to attend, it'll also ask you if you'd like to be available for one-to-one -one meetings. If you wanted to add more people to an individual meeting request, there's a button right at the top to add more people before you invite them. That's how a meeting works for an in-person to an in-person. If I wanted to request a meeting with a virtual person, same functionality is gonna work, but you're gonna see a pop-up right here. The only difference is that you're gonna have a video meeting which is held within the mobile app or the networking portal. It's based off of WebRTC, which just means you need to have a modern web browser and you have to allow that web browser access to your audio and your camera uh, to have the video meeting. If you don't want to do that, you can also enter in your own location, which could be a Zoom link, a Teams link, or anything of that nature. Sending messages to people, it works just like this. It goes out as a push alert in the mobile app. It goes out as an email from the system, does not expose as anyone's contact data. That's how networking in a quick fashion works in general if you're just looking through the attendee list. If you go to the meetings tab, you're gonna have that same option, but over here, you're gonna just display all of your one-to-one -one meetings. If you have any awaiting confirmation, that means someone sent you a meeting request, it's gonna be right in your face. Uh, if you've requested any and they were not responded to yet, you could filter to those. The rest are pretty uh, self-explanatory with canceled or declined. If you're doing video meetings, right here is the system pre-check. This will make sure that your web browser and everything works. And if you have any issues, you could contact support at jujima.com and we'll work through those for you. You can also send multiple meeting requests or look at people through here as well, either one-to-one -one meetings or if you wanted to meet in a group, you could do that. Going back to the main homepage, you have a call out to speakers that works just like the attendees tab. It just links to their sessions. The agenda tab will show you all the events throughout the entire week. You could build your own personal schedule, which you can export at any point on the right hand side. You'll see for certain events, if they have registrations that are outside of here, you could do so. If you click into any event, it's gonna have as much information as posted about it moderators and speakers you can have a comment thread you could take notes on this if it's a live stream session there'd be a button right here to view the stream and then you could link up to where the live stream is for that particular session sponsors page is where all the great sponsors are for the event we ask that everyone come over here and at least take a look at all the sponsors you could click on them to access more information about these sponsors you also have a list of all the presenting companies for the white hat investment. Through here, as they're uploading information, you could click into their profile to get as much information as they've uploaded, either external contact information or if they've uploaded any content. You could visit their websites. If you wanna request meetings with them, it's gonna pull up a meeting request form for all the attendees that are associated with that company. Other features of the service are located on the left-hand side in this hamburger menu. 
So if you have any messages, that's if someone sent you an email through the system, you'll see a notification such as this, or you'd have a push alert or app notification on your phone if you're using the mobile app. If you wanted to just look at your favorites, you can access them through here. Notes will allow you to access all the notes you've taken and export them to Excel. Uh, we also have a social feed. The social feed is where people are going to tell their story of what they're trying to accomplish during the event or the week of events. They could post videos, they could post documents. Everything's clickable. You could like it just like you can on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. You can post comments to them. Uh, last thing to bring to your attention is just over in the upper right hand corner, we have help notes or user guide uh, that are just basic overviews of how the general features work or there's a contact area to reach out to support which nine out of ten times you're going to get me and i'll be happy to respond to you or you'll get someone on my team but that is a quick overview of how the partnering portal works in general the mobile app works the same way you'll have access to all of those features and again my number one helpful hint is uh, when you start getting ready for this in the upper right hand corner populate your profile as much as possible uh, having a picture, having a bio description leads to you having more people know who you are, what you're offering or doing, and will allow for more connections to happen at the event. And with that, Joan, I will uh, open this up for questions or be happy to show anything else that you'd like me to show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. And um, for those of you that are, are watching online or thinking about utilizing the Jujima system for your events, um, I can tell you that their support team is fabulous and, um, and it's very user-friendly, even I could say it. So um, it's, it's wonderful to work with the team. Now, one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, um, well, do what access do I have in the system? So that is something that I set up. It is not something that Jujima set up. So if you don't like the access you have, tell me, not them. Um, but here's how it works. If you are registered for the White Hat Conference, then you have full access to all of the functionality in the Arizona Bioscience Week one-on-one -on -one partnering app. That means that you can view profiles, you can set up meetings, you can manage your agenda, you can do research, you can go back into the system after the event to follow up and look at who you've talked to. And we'll keep it up for a full month, and then if I'm seeing lots of activity, maybe we'll keep it up longer than that. But you'll have all the way through to Halloween to, you know, to do your follow-ups and get your data. If you are not attending white hat then you only have access to the calendaring portion so you can use the app to keep track of where you're going when you need to be there knowing who the speakers are all of that information but you do not have access to the company profiles and you do not have access to partnering and that's for a really good reason which is that for the integrity of the investor conference it's important that we know who an, who an accredited investor is and who is not an accredited investor. So that the companies have that information and they know who they are able to talk to about what they're doing and who they're not able to talk to about it. So um, if you are on this call and you're participating in one of the many events during Bioscience Week, then the app is your scheduling tool and your navigation tool. If you are attending White Hat, then you are going to receive an invitation, if you have not already, from Arizona Bioscience Week partnering. And then it will provide you with your login information so that you can set yourself up just the way Dave did. Um, the first time you log in, it's going to ask you, we'll send you a password and your login ID. We will then um, have you reset your password, and then you're in the system. I'm telling you right now, if I go in that system and I see a lot of blank faces and no pictures, I'm going to be disappointed in you. 
because we haven't been together for over two years in a large forum. And so it's really important that people can see your photo so that when you're walking around the conference and they're looking for you, they can find you. So please put your picture in. The nice thing about this system is it doesn't have to be your professional headshot that's exactly a certain size. You can upload any picture and then you're going to crop it in the system. So it could be that, that picture that you really, really liked from your kid's wedding. Just crop the other people out and there you go. So um, get your pictures in there. Don't, don't be an empty, an empty seat at the table. It really doesn't look good. So let's make sure that we get that done. Now, let's say that um, you can't find your invitation. You can call the AZ Bio office at 480-779-8101, and Abigail will be happy to help you resend your invitation. If you are not registered for White Hat, remember you're not going to have access to partnering. <clears throat> and um, we've been sending out invitations as people register for, for White Hat. So if you can't find your invitation, shoot me an email, call the office, they can resend it for you. If you're not registered for White Hat, now's a really good time to do it. As a reminder, if you're an accredited investor, you get to attend for free both the AZ Bio Awards and White Hat. And if you're not an accredited investor, then the information on pricing based on what your role is in the ecosystem is available on the website. Um, so I think I've addressed most of the questions that I've seen popping up in the chat. And um, relative to those of you that are attending White Hat, sponsoring events, seeing various you know, things going on, you will be able to have your registered attendees, um, each one of you will have access to the app. It is not a per company thing, it is key to the individual. Dave, is there anything you can think of that I missed? Just make sure I wasn't on mute still. Uh, no, I think you've covered it all. Uh, I did see a chat about if you're a sponsor, if you had multiple people attending, they'll each get their own set of usernames and passwords. Uh, other than that, uh, you've hit everything, uh, the nail on the head. Awesome. But there are going to be questions. We know that. And we want to make sure that everything um, gets, gets scheduled. Okay, so Martin's got a question. Can meetings be set up for outside of the conference dates? So in the system, currently it is set up on the calendaring for um, setting up meetings. Dave, I believe we've got um, the app opportunity to set meetings up now? So the way it works is you have a week of event dates. Certain days during the event have tables that would be assigned, which again, I believe are Wednesday and Thursday off the mm -hmm. top of my head. You could suggest a location if you'd like to set up a meeting on Monday, Tuesday, or what have you. If you're talking about arranging a meeting outside of Arizona Bioscience Week, technically you cannot facilitate the answer is yes and no. Technically, you cannot facilitate that in the app through the meetings portal, but you are free to connect with anyone through emails and messaging. So you could easily message someone through the app, uh, exchange external contact information and arrange whatever you'd like outside of Arizona Bioscience Week. Uh, so technically, yes, you can do it. Just we're only facilitating one-to-one -one meetings based off of the logistics for that week. And that's just because everybody doesn't keep their calendars up to date beyond that. Um, and Correct. so the meeting functionality of matching you up to good dates doesn't work. Um, but you absolutely are going to have access to the program. You'll be able to, to reach out to people to follow up. Hey, it was great to see you at the conference. I promise to give you some information. You know, here it is. Um, although I anticipate that in most cases, you'll be getting people's contact information that you meet with and putting it in your own databases. Um, to manage as you continue your fundraising journey. Um, and for those of us that are investors, as we continue our prospecting. So it's very, very important that um, you use the app and that you're visible in the app, that your profiles are up to date, 
Um, for my investor friends that are on the call, um, investors have the unique opportunity to attend either in person or virtually for partnering purposes, um, just because we've got investors that are participating from different parts of the country and, and actually in, in some cases from different parts of the world. So um, that is something that you have the ability to see. Um, and the other thing to be aware of for investors is investors do have the ability to hide their profiles and just look around. So um, there may be people out there that can see you, but you can't see them. And that is their personal preference for their private information. All right, with that, um, do we have any more questions? Let's see. Um, okay, so can white hat presenting companies have multiple logins for Jujima? Um, yes and no. So the answer is, um, for instance, with Anuncia, they have a number of team members that are registered and attending the conference. So each of their attendees has their own personal login, plus they are all recognized together under the company as members of that particular team. Um, if you have, and, and this is, is very common with, for instance, our speakers, um, if you have an admin who manages things for you, um, then if you communicate with um, Abigail, Laura, or I and say, you know, I'd like a secondary email in my profile, um, we can get that taken care of for you. Dave, I'm not sure they have that capability, do they? We don't sure. allow anyone. I'm not on mute, am I? Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> I get confused. Uh, we're only adding people into the system that are registered. So a user cannot add new people to the system. You could share your passwords if you want, if you want your admin to have access and whatnot. But uh, in general, Dave only has one profile. Joan only has one profile. If five people from Jujima are registered, then the company itself has five attendees attached to it. Uh, you cannot add anyone outside of the system. Great. Thanks, Dave. But um, any other questions? All right. Well, I hope that you're going to use this next week and a half to do two things. One is make sure that all of your information is current in the app. And two, get some rest. Because Arizona Bioscience Week is going to be a very busy week. And uh, you want to be able to make sure that you're ready and um, able to take advantage of everything you possibly can. So um, with that, I want to, again, thank everyone. You'll be receiving um, emails from me um, every day this week. And each day is going to highlight what's happening on that day of the week during Bioscience Week. So if you have not signed up for some of the great things we were talking about today, now is your chance. And again, remember, if you want full access to all of the capability of this amazing tool, then you want to be participating in Arizona Bioscience Week and specifically participating and be registered for White Hat. So with that, um, no more questions. Dave, thank you for being such a terrific partner. And I will tell you, folks, those of you that got were registered early, you got your um, invitations either right before Labor Day or right after Labor Day. And Dave, God bless him, was on the phone with me Labor Day weekend helping me get things set up. So when we talk about, you know, really great service, um, the team is here to help you be successful. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for everybody that's participating in Bioscience Week, and uh, make it a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.